and Sheko. Uh, and today I, I really rise. I don't often uh, speak at these on these occasions. I really rise to space, pay special tribute to our CEO and President, Abutuman Sheko, who, as you heard, and as you know, uh, will be leaving us and going to other greater things, we hope. Uh, today was his last presentation. And I think you all join me in congratulating Kutuma and the executive management team for these excellent results. The performance as it was presented to the board uh, yesterday, looked really outstanding to us. And I'm sure all of you will confirm that as well. It's largely been due to the wonderful performance and the dedication that we've heard from Kutuman Echo as he has led this company as the CEO for close on to 10 years. We pay tribute to him and are sad that he is leaving, but thank him for this great achievement. There is a slide here which in a way tells Petuma's story <coughs> in graphic terms. He initially joined the, the company as a non-executive chairman and from being non-executive chairman he was then appointed the chief executive. At some stage I thought that there is hope for non-executive chairman, uh, but the more I thought about it and the work that is involved as a lazy person, I said, no, I don't think so. There's, there's hope for me in this type of work. What he did achieve, obviously together with a number of other people in the company, various other executives, is to take MTN from what it was in the year 2000, as you see over there. Year 2000, we had five operations. And by year 2005, we had 11, and by 2010, 21 operations. But what is most telling is that this company that was born in this country started to explode beyond the borders of South Africa and started addressing a market of 552 million people, half a billion. And if you take that Africa is almost a billion people, it is addressing a market which is half the size of the population of Africa. And the market cap, as you clearly see uh, in that slide, has risen to 253 billion rand. Now, if you, if you think a little bit and reflect back, to a number of companies that we have on our stock exchange and look at their market cap and look at the time it has taken them to reach the level <coughs> that they are. If you look at the top five, you'll find that MTN is clearly the baby in that pack. It is the youngest, the newest, and it is the one company that <coughs> even from the beginning started going beyond the borders of its own home market. The revenue has grown from 6 billion to 115, as Nasir was reporting. The EBITDA has also grown from a mere 2 to 50.5. But what is more telling is that the subscribers, the subscribers have grown to 150. 42 million. Now if you begin to think about what 152 million subscribers is, 
that you're providing a service, you are connected to 142 million almost on a daily basis. This is phenomenal. <coughs> and this has happened due to the work that has been done by Putuma and indeed the other executives. And I've thought quite a bit what it is that drove this man to the level of performance that he has given your company, this company. And as I thought a little bit, I arrived at ten attributes. The one was that as he came in as a non-executive chairman and was catapulted to the position of chief executive, some of us who sat near the ring, side seats, of this arena that he was performing on, could see that a vision was developing. A vision, he had a vision, and became quite a visionary person, and in the end, a visionary leader. And this is what he was able to give this company. Focus, being focused was one of the attributes that some of us saw, and then I think indeed, the performance speaks for itself. The one other important one, which many of us who have worked with Putuma that we saw was that there was an element, a huge element of hard work. Hard work and driving himself consistently and persistently on an ongoing basis. I had some people who were doing some, some work for me, I digress a bit, and uh, the one guy who was supposed to do this work during the day decided that he was just too tired and wanted to sleep, and he went and slept under a tree, and it happened to be in a place where there are snakes and dangerous uh, uh, animals, and I said, well, some people do take quite serious risks to, in, to indulge in their leisure, <laughs> to sleep and uh, not to work. Fortunately, we didn't have that with Putuma. He didn't sleep in dangerous places. Uh, so he remained focused and he worked hard. And the other important attribute is that he was able to build a good team, a good pe team of people around him. And I think you can all see that MTN is well endowed with good people. We have good people in MTN. They work hard, they are focused. One of our directors was commenting yesterday as they came into the building. They said, this is a phenomenal achievement. Here we have people in this huge building who are going around like ants. Ants don't sleep on the job, they work. And this is what we have in MTN. And this is largely due to the leadership that Tuma has, has given to this company, that he has built a really good team of people around him who work hard. The other important thing, of course, which I think many of us saw, was that Putuma has had a, a good appetite for taking calculated risks. He was able to take us as a company to a number of markets where many people <coughs> feared to go. And that's a mark of a good leader. Take calculated risks. And I recall that each time at the board level he would come with proposals together with his other executives. And sometimes we would think that this guy needs to have his head red. But as he outlined, the proposals of why we should go into various countries, Iran and all that, in the end we saw good sense with all of that. Resilience was one of the important attributes. <coughs> Even as sometimes we faced setbacks and some failures, with some of the transactions that we wanted to conclude, as you well know, Putuma and his executives kept going forward. Each time there was a setback, they would come back with a new one. 
And that is an important attribute in a leader. And the one other important one which underpins Patuma's character is doing things in an excellent manner. Excellence has underpinned nearly everything that he has done for us as a company, and we thank him for that. The last two are attributes that really belong to him as a person. Honesty, he's been very honest in the way that he has dealt with the board, in the way that he has dealt with his other colleagues, and that for us has been a very, very important attribute. But the most important and the one that I like most is that he's, he's a modest person. He's been a CEO who has led his troops, his colleagues, with a great deal of modesty. No rasmatas, no fleshiness, but really modest. And in paying tribute to him and urging him to continue uh, throughout his life modesty, I've decided that we're going to give him a modest gift. <laughs> I'm going to give him a modest gift. Tuma, as you well know, loves beautiful ties. Like me. Like me. But this is a very nice MTN tie. It's a bit on the modest side. Uh, I don't even know who makes this tie. It's one of those. Uh, one of the <laughs> on this tie, and we would like him to wear this tie. I don't know how often you should wear it. Uh, the quality is modest. Quite <laughs> but I'd like to give him this tie and urge him to wear it at the very least once a month. <laughs> Tuma, we thank you for the great work that you've performed for our company, for shareholders, for increasing shareholder value in probably one of the most exponential ways. And it is good, it is good for me, I'll put this pin in, it is good that we've had, and this has never really been a key issue, but it's good we've had a black CEO who has performed so well in the new South Africa and has grown a company like an MTN, which today has become a continental giant. You might have read that MTN is the most recognized brand today on the African continent and bigger than other global brands. So we are happy about that and thank you very much Tuma for having done that for us. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Sfiso Dabenko, who is going to succeed Putuma and Sfiso Sfiso uh, is probably known to, to most of you. He's been with the company for 12 years. He joined in 1999 as managing director of South Africa. MTN South Africa, and as we were facing a number of challenges in Nigeria, uh, many of you will recall that when MTN decided to go to Nigeria, there were a number of questions that were raised, uh, whether we were mad or crazy or whatever, but uh, nonetheless we proceeded to enter the Nigerian market and Sifiso, uh, was appointed Managing Director of MTA Nigeria and helped to shore up our operation there to stabilize it and to introduce the real MTN ethos and culture and high performance uh, in the operations in Nigeria. And we are grateful for SFISO for having led the Nigerian operation and having put it on a really good and firm footing. The performance that we're getting out of Nigeria is largely due to what Sifiso helped to, to do for us there. 
And in 2006, he was appointed Chief Operating Officer, and in that role worked very closely with Putuma, and uh, uh, the two of them have helped to, to build this company to the level where it is today. So Sufiso is an old hand. He knows the company. He knows the culture of our company. He knows how it works. He knows how it functions. And he knows the challenges that MTN faces as it moves forward. And during the course of time, he has also been able to develop and build a vision. And it was for this reason that the board decided that we should appoint Sfiso Gabenwa as the group CEO and president going forward. We're really excited that there's been a change of the guard, or there will be a change of the guard at the end of the month, and uh, uh, Putuma will be handing over his baton to Sfiso, and we, we expect that Sfiso will take that baton and run ahead. Uh, he's worked previously in a number of other roles, but more importantly, he worked at ESCO and he, he, as an engineer, was deeply involved in the electrification process and distribution process for electricity that has happened in our country. Uh, trained as an engineer in electrical, uh, the most dangerous part of engineering that you and I are going to get close to because we get electrocuted and he devils and all that. He's a risk taker and uh, we hope he takes calculated risks and he's got an MBA degree and it is my pleasure to introduce Swiss Udabenwa to you. Thank you very much.